Hey Calvary Gospel, so good to be able to connect with everyone today and uh, I'm just excited to share uh, a little more about what I've been reading out of the book of Jeremiah and the uh, entire journey uh, in the book of Jeremiah about God um, opening up to his people and telling them about the destruction that's going to be headed their way because of the way they've been living and the way they've turned away um, from the Father God. And that there was judgment heading their way. And um, I, I was reading toward this. This is really toward the end of the book. And I'm, and I'm wrapping up with my study in this book. And it's in uh, chapter 51. We begin to see uh, a Jeremiah really begin to open up his heart uh, about what God is speaking uh, in and through him. But also Jeremiah is speaking and, and opening up about the point of view of Israel. And, and about the captivity that they are in and, and uh, how they're living their life and how they feel as a nation, really. And, and I wanted to tie that back um, to us believers and how sometimes certain areas in our life and certain times and seasons in our lives where we feel like we've become captive to a situation, where we feel like we've become captive to uh, a certain um, ideology or a certain time. And right now, a lot of people... In this current time, or maybe feel captive in where they are, and and in the whole situation that's happening around the world, and how it's impacting them where they are, and and impacting every part of their life, and and we really begin to see that um, Jeremiah begin to open up his cry of the people, opening up his heart about how the people of Israel are feeling, and we begin to read as we're going to read through chapter fifty one toward the end of it. We begin to see that heart. We begin to see uh, how the children of Israel are feeling about this situation and how it is affecting them. But we see really quickly that as soon as Jeremiah voices um, the feelings of the nation and how there's so little hope and so little to look forward to, we see God come in and through his word make a promise to Israel, the nation of Israel and Judah and, and really show what's going to happen to Babylon in the future. And, and as we read this, I want us to read and see that Israel and the nation of Israel represents humanity and people. And it represents the people that God loves, and the, which is all of humanity. He loves all of humanity. But um, we see Babylon as the enemy. And we see Babylon as that sign of captivity. And, and as a force or an idea or, or really Satan in his ideas and what he's trying to do with this world, uh, really trying to steal the hope out of people. And and really we see Babylon as an image of something that uh, really is after the souls of people and really after to, uh, after people to seek and destroy them. And as we read, we're gonna, I want to make those connections and I really want to encourage us today as we read through them uh, of, of the hope and the promise that God has given us and that promise being fulfilled in Jesus. So let's uh let's turn to Jeremiah 51 and I'm going to start at verse 34. We're going to read down to verse 40. And um I'm I'm going to jump back a couple of verses also toward the end there, but I I want us to follow along as I read and really get that connection and really really see what God is trying to speak to us here. And I want to set the stage here. Like I said, um Jeremiah he's writing out the feelings of Israel, the nation of Israel. So we're going to start here in verse 34. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He has crushed me. And it, and you could really see that uh, Jeremiah is opening up that heart again. He's really saying that, hey, um, th this nation that has come and captured us, it, it, it feels like the pressure is coming down on us. It feels like um, there's something that's happening that's squeezing the life out of you. And it, it literally says, he has crushed me. It has brought the nation to the point of a complete surrender to Babylon and just complete hopelessness. And then it says, he has made me an empty vessel. He has swallowed me up like a monster. He has filled my stomach with my delicacies. He has spit me out. And you can see this uh, ravaging and just the wordplay here of how um, the nation just feels empty and they feel useless and they feel completely destroyed with no hope and nothing to look forward to. Let the violence done to me and my flesh be upon Babylon. The inhabitant of Zion will say, and my blood be upon the inhabitants of Sodea. 
Jerusalem will say, and this is Jer this is Jeremiah saying, this is Jerusalem speaking. This is Israel sharing their heart of how this made they feel. And and sometimes I you bring this in correlation with us believers and, and even people who, who haven't been believers yet, but are, are running through or, or walking through those areas in our life where you just feel that pressure, you feel that that crushing on your spirit you feel that crushing through all sorts of, of physical things going on around us and in, in situations and things happening and things sh sh taking shape and changing rapidly and it's and and even the the destruction of jerusalem at that time it came so quick and so rapidly and it happened so fast you know, it left people in dismay and it left people uh, in shock and awe. And, and, and now they're being carried away to, to a place they know nothing about. And everything just changed so fast for them. But we see everything change here in verse 36. We see God and uh, just plead the case for Israel. And even though God is the one who allowed them to go uh, in, into this captivity and allowed that judgment to fall upon them, God had a bigger uh, idea, bigger thing in store. He had so much more in store for them. He could see so much farther ahead. And and really what um, God is painting the picture for us here is really salvation and really what was to come through Jesus in, in the New Testament with Jesus coming to earth and, and destroying what the enemy set up to destroy Israel. So this enemy comes in, he, he's he got that grip, just like the enemy uh, in the devil, he has that, he had that grip uh, on humanity. He, he Humanity was destined for hopelessness, but it's because of Jesus. And, and Jesus, he came in and he restored and he made new and um, he took away the power from the enemy. So uh, over our lives. So here we go. Here we go in uh, verse 36. We see God just plead that case for Israel. He says, behold, I will plead your case and take vengeance for you. I will dry up her sea. And when he says her, he means Babylon. He says, I will dry up her sea and make her springs dry. Babylon shall be a heap, a dwelling place for jackals. Now, as I was reading this, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking back and I'm like, Wow, imagine being an Israelite at that time. You were just captured by the biggest force in the world. You've brought into you've been brought into captivity. You've been brought to a new land and you're forced to work there and live there and build a new life there. And and this in Babylon and is in just is just such a powerful force. You don't see any hope in the situation. But God here, he says that when we look at our situation through through our eyes, everything seems hopeless. A lot of times the, the things the enemy um, creates and targets toward us, they seem overpowering and they seem like they're going to, they rule the day and that they have the final say. But God here, even though, like I said, he allowed this captivity to happen, he allowed this judgment to come upon Israel. He had something more for Israel. He had hope and a future for Israel. And it says here that he's going to create, he's going to take Babylon and make it into a heap in a dwelling place for jackals. An astonishment and a hissing without an inhabitant. So he's basically saying he's going to wipe out Babylon and there will literally be almost no noise there. And it's just going to be a desolate land. They shall roar together like lions. They shall growl like lions whelps. In their excitement, I will prepare their feasts. I will make them drunk and they may rejoice and sleep a perpetual sleep and not awake. I will bring them down like lambs to the slaughter, like rams with male goats. And, and, and as you read that, and, it, and it's really, it, it's God really sharing and, and, and giving hope to the people there that he's going to overcome what's standing against them. He's going to take uh, what seems impossible and make it possible. He was going to restore Israel back um, to the promised land. And and I could only imagine being in their situation, how how some even hearing that promise from Jeremiah, it, it, it would, you'd feel some form of doubt because this, the current situation was so real to them and so overwhelming. And and I want to encourage uh, everyone watching today that whatever your situation is, and no matter how big and overwhelming it may feel, and however the enemy's taken that and trying to use that against you. I want to encourage you today that God is standing and interceding for you. He has a hope and a future for you. And he's thinking of you. And he's already won the battle. 
And that the most important battle he's won was redeeming your soul through his son, Jesus. That was the most important battle. And he has done that for you. And you have that opportunity to walk in that knowledge and in that understanding and in that fullness by receiving what he has done and making him Lord of your life. And, and not only that, but throughout your life, he promises to be there with us throughout whatever issues or forms of captivity we may face in, in our day to day lives and through our seasons and our ups and downs. God promises to be there interceding for us and to overcome the enemy whenever it arises. And, and that may look different. That overcoming um, aspect may look different in everyone's life. But the most important thing is that he has uh, destroyed the, the heaps of Babylon or the devil's plans against you. He has made what the devil created against you. He has completely destroyed that. And now he offers eternal life. And that's the encouragement and the hope that we have no matter what season we walk through, whether uh, you're an unbeliever and, and you're just hearing and, and realizing that I need Jesus in my life. I need to uh, give my life under the Lordship of Jesus and under the our Father God. But even us believers, sometimes even at, when we're saved, we run into our, our seasons where we just struggle sometimes to remember that God is for us. He's not against us. And, and these verses here, they just reminded us and they just encouraged us and encouraged me as I was studying through this passage that sometimes I, I'm like Israel where I'm just pouring my heart out. I'm like, God, I don't know what the situation, where it's headed, what it, what it means, what you're trying to do through it. But I know that you work all things together for good for those who love you. And, and, and in that same sentence, in that same verse is following right after that, there's that God's promise right there that he's going to destroy what has come up against you. So I hope you're encouraged, Calvary Gospel, and I hope um, that this word uh, stirs something within you, stirs an encouragement within you, and I'm looking forward to joining you again in the future. Thank you.